I'm going to talk a little bit about a collaborative project that I'm a part of here at the U of A. Um, I'm going to start talking out of, about the Orlando project and then some of the uh, new tools that we've developed um, sort of coming out of that project. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about, at the end, about how that's impacted my own research. The Orlando project began as a collaborative experiment to do literary history in new ways. Um, it wanted to explore the potential of computers to support new modes of research in the humanities. And this is the resulting text base. It resembles a reference work, uh, but its electronic structure supports advanced historical and cultural in inquiry. So it's composed of 8 million words of literary historical information um, in the form of more than 1,200 entries. And the entry is here. Uh, that's what you get when you go to an opening page of an entry. So it's encoded in XML um, using a tag set which basically categorizes and structures the prose um, and gives, uh, with more than basically 250 tags, um, for everything from cultural influences to narrative techniques. Because of its tagging structure, the Orlando encoding system enables this degree of cross-referencing and textual interrelation that's impossible with just a book. But the existing uh, interface doesn't really uh, enable, it doesn't fully leverage the encoding to explore or understand how deeply inter interconnected the text space is. So uh, understanding the limits of the current interface, uh, the Orlando research team sought to use network visualizations uh, in order to leverage um, this uh, interconnectedness. So the first tool that we developed was OVIS, or Orlando Vision, uh, which basically maps the connections between individuals and groups in a link node graph. So people are nodes and the edges that connect them are tags. The links or edges are <coughs> color coded, which corresponds to the coloring of the particular semantic <coughs> tag, and then it indicates the association or the context of the graph. So basically here you see um, a particular tag selected, which is why all the links are green. This is the political tag, and then it shows how these women are connected. You can see here, this is the search space. The text space is fully searchable. It offers the ability to navigate large selections of data at once. The search function sort of makes it, enables you to search that entire text space just by word, but it uh, only connects people to people and it um, isn't web deliberable. So that brings me to the next tool that we developed, which is HuViz, which uh, similarly maps the connection between individuals and groups, um, but uh, connects not only people to people, but people to places, organizations, and texts. It also has the ability to be used with other kinds of data sources, so not just XML, but also RDF. Um, we're hoping to actually have this as a tool that sort of links uh, into Quirk, which Cecily's going to talk about later, and enables that um, so you can input your own data into this tool. Uh, not only can the user drag and drop nodes in or out of the graph, um, but the side panel sort of dynamically adjusts to what the user does in, um, inside the graph circle there, and uh, you can also do it the opposite way, so you can select from the side pane what items you want to see, and then um, uh, it will reflect in there. All right, so if you want to talk to me more about how this has impacted my own research, I will um, discuss that with you in person. <laughs>